Los Angeles tonight, city police remain out in force, but National Guard troops and sheriff's deputies have been pulled off the streets. In the wake of the split decision in the Rodney King trial, all is quiet, calm prevails. And as Jim Dolan reports, a bruised city is looking forward to a healing process. It doesn't look like much of anything special, the corner of Florence and Normandy, but it is perhaps the most photographed intersection in Los Angeles over the last year. It was here the riot started 355 days ago as the rage over the first Rodney King trial verdicts spread. People here feel considerably better tonight. I think two out of four is not bad. I think yesterday justice was served. Because the riot started here, this corner has gotten a lot of attention over the last couple of weeks. More attention, frankly, than the people who live here would like. They're tired of talking about last year, and they want to talk now about the needs of the future. Stop already. We want to put this behind us. We want to build back what we lost. You know, look around you. you know, every, everything is all torn down still, and it's over now. More playgrounds for the little kids and the teenagers. They need to be more um, jobs available and... Um, just more opportunity for us education-wise. All they start opening jobs and, you know, some kind of training for young black folks. That's why I hope they start doing everything to go on and, you know, everybody keep their promise. Open up jobs for everybody. They were looking forward to at the first AME church in South Central this morning, a baptism to symbolize the rebirth of a city. We come this morning on the first day of a new life for the city of Los Angeles. It's a new beginning. Now we can focus on the positive things, looking at going and making L.A. A, a better place to live rather than focusing on so many of the negative things that happen. Not everyone was totally satisfied with the verdict. That it's going to be hot this summer. And, you know, hey, nothing's changed. But most did think it was a good beginning. We will not listen to the nuts. We will listen to the word of the Lord. We will listen to those who speak for him, like Reverend Murray, and we will not just rebuild L.A., we will rebuild it better. And so the city begins to heal, slowly now, looking forward. In Los Angeles, Jim Dolan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, tonight the peaceful response felt here at home since the verdicts also continues to hold. Earlier today, it was a time to reflect on lessons learned from the civil rights trial. From Harlem to Brooklyn, churches throughout the city talked about the implications of the verdict. Clergy spoke of the need to move onward and upward, but some were disappointed that all four officers were not convicted. You know, justice had one eye closed and one eye open. And, uh, but I think, we, again, we can't dwell on that. We, we, we've got to move on now. At least we got something. At least something happened. Some reconciliation with mixed warnings. The head of the Guardians, a black police association, claims that many officers still do not police themselves. Sarah? Harry, the calm of a Sunday at a Queens nursing home was shattered today when a man strolled in and suddenly opened fire on two patients. Tonight, police are still looking for the suspect, 45-year-old Harold Green. Jay Dapper with the grim details. A beautiful spring Sunday at the Highland Care Center became a horrifying nightmare this morning as 15 elderly residents in the lunchroom watched as a man shot his sister and mother. He came into the day room. There were about 15 seniors present at the time. Uh, he um, went into uh, uh, crouching combat stance, uh, fired three times at, uh, at his sister, uh, hitting her and uh, thereafter proceeded over to his mother uh, who was in a wheelchair and uh, fired um, uh, at least one and perhaps two rounds into her chest. Doctors were not able to save 81-year-old Dorothy Simpson or her 35-year-old daughter Margaret Galvez. The suspect, Simpson's son Harold Green, got away. Residents and workers were shocked by the violence. I see the lady every day and she's a very, you know, quiet and nice woman, very nice. Did this scare uh, a lot of the people in yeah, there? Yeah, nervous. Everybody's nervous. Investigators say Green and his sister had been fighting for some time over their mother's estate, and Green had been asked to leave the facility just last month, but there had not been any violence. He had never oh, threatened the mother or the sister okay. on the premise before, but he had, like I, I said before, he had uh, broken a window at the entrance. Green was arrested for that incident. Even though Green had given police a California address in the past, investigators believe that he now lives in New York because he visited his mother here at this nursing home almost every day. In Jamaica, Queens, J.D. Dapper, Channel 7, Eyewitness News.
At the same time, tonight the battle lines are drawn as hundreds of protesters turned out earlier this afternoon to put the heat on X-rated entertainment stores. Let's keep the neighborhood clean. Let's keep the neighborhood clean. Murray Hill residents demonstrated in front of a local adult video store. They rallied in support of a bill before the city council that would prohibit X-rated stores from operating within 500 feet of a residentially zoned community. People were gathering together all over the U.S. today. It was 50 years ago during World War II that the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising began, the first major Jewish organized resistance to what is known as the Holocaust. In Washington, D.C., the names of victims were read, a list making up only a fraction of the six million Jews killed. In San Antonio, Texas, people came to this memorial, a fountain of gray rocks bearing the names of concentration camps. In Miami Beach, a powerful memorial symbolizes the atrocities suffered by Jews. Names on this wall memorialize the victims. And in New York, Vice President Al Gore was one of many taking part in Holocaust ceremonies. It began with a prayer for the dead. For those old enough, painful memories. For those too young, a past too important to forget. Today we must speak of the unspeakable. Vice President Al Gore was among the 6,000 people at this Madison Square Garden ceremony. He said suffering and hate go on today, only now in the former Yugoslavia. A small boy's innocent life, with all its promise, had been reduced to a statistic recorded on a piece of paper. And this happened in our time only weeks ago. Must such horrors go on? They must not. This remembrance marks the 50th anniversary of the first organized resistance to Nazi Europe. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising left 7,000 people dead. 71-year-old Ben Lehrman made a trip back to Treblinka, a former Nazi concentration camp. My sister was going inside, and I was separated from her. And she called out my name several times. There was nothing you could do. <laughs> In Warsaw, a monument marks the place where Jews boarded the death trains. In Israel, sirens blared in a moment of silence for the uprising and the many, many killed. Survivors remember too well. But we came out with dignity and those of us who survived came out building, learning and studying and building new lives. And while survivors have built new lives, they've also worked to build a museum. This week in Washington, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum is being dedicated. Certainly some moving tributes. Absolutely. In South Africa, the memorial is for an assassinated black activist. But deadly violence erupts as supporters plan for the funeral of Chris Hani. The story is coming up next. And UN peacekeepers begin massive evacuations in the Bosnian town of Srebrenica. It's part of a new ceasefire agreement. Wake up. Call 540-WAKE. Get up. Tonight there is more deadly violence in South Africa. Drive-by shootings in a stolen car in a black township of south of Johannesburg left at least 17 people dead and a dozen wounded. All of the victims were black, so were the gunmen. Police say that they have no motive for these shootings. The attack came the same day as thousands of people mourned the assassination of black leader Chris Hani. They came to the soccer stadium outside of Johannesburg to say farewell to the man that they called the champion of peace, freedom, democracy, and equality. After waiting hours to walk past Hani's open casket, some were overcome with emotion. Hani, who was one of the most popular leaders of the African National Congress, was assassinated in his driveway on April the 10th. A white extremist is charged with a murder. Hani is going to be buried tomorrow in what is expected to be the largest funeral in South African history. Black and white leaders are calling for it to be peaceful in memory of a man who so desperately wanted peace. Archbishop Desmond Tutu will lead tomorrow's funeral for Chris Hani. Sarah? Harry, in Bosnia, where violence has also claimed so many lives, UN forces began evacuating Srebrenica today. It's part of an agreement virtually cementing a Serbian victory over that town. Peacekeeping forces flew children and the badly injured out of Srebrenica to nearby Tuzla. It's expected more than 30,000 people will have to be airlifted out of that area. Another U.S.-Iraqi confrontation today. An American warplane destroyed an Iraqi radar tracking site. The radar site was located south of the no-fly zone in northern Iraq. 
The Pentagon says the plane was spotted by the radar and fired because the crew felt threatened. White House officials call the action justified. Well, there's lots of confrontation on the ice today. Mark Stevens coming up next with the day's sports action. The Islanders travel to Washington to take on the Capitals in game one of their playoff series. Plus, you've heard of Murphy's Law. Well, when the Yankees are in Cincinnati, it becomes Murray's Law. Mark will explain coming up next. Once by finishing up the regular season in third place, avoid.